Okay, so today is Friday the 13th in October, and what we have is an abundance of foraging bees and wasps in the air, and the resources are low, so competition is high. Now, what a lot of beekeepers do is they open feed, and they open feed a variety of different materials. The most popular is 50-50 sugar water and sugar, like CNH pure cane sugar. And what I have here for this test, and you're looking at the time lapse sequence here, 50%, so that's the 50 50 sugar water all the way to the right. And this is by volume 25%, second from the right, and 10%, second from the left, and 5% sugar water all the way to the left. And the water resource is the pure, P U R, filtered water that we talked about before in the last test and turned out to be the water that was preferred by the bees. So this four minute time lapse sequence shows that the bees really pile on the 25 and 50% sugar water. Now sugar and water together just provides the carbohydrate that the bees need to have the energy to warm the hive and to forage of course. So by open feeding what we're doing is we're giving something for those foragers to do plus they are bringing resources to the hive and they won't be attacking other colonies of honeybees, hopefully. If there were no resources in the environment, and as you can see in the background there, the corn's dry and ready for harvest, there are very few flowering plants left, so the stronger colonies tend to converge on weaker colonies and raid them out and take their resources. So by open feeding, you do two things. You give those foragers something to do and get their energy away from weaker colonies that may be robbed out. And you provide resources that will help them keep their hives warm. Now the more water percentage there is compared to the sugar, the more dehydrating they have to do. So once the imitation nectar here is taken into the hive, the bees have to dry it out and condense it so that uh, it becomes honey. Now, you want to do this open feeding well after you've taken honey off of your hives because you obviously don't want to be taking sugar water honey off as a resource for your own consumption. So do this after you've done your last harvest. And so, as you can see here, the 50% and 25% are equally consumed by the bees. They are just taking it down. Now, I wish it were backlit better so that you could see. Right now, they're down by a third. Um, what goes on is the bees are taking this all off in just a day. So the entire cycle of what you're seeing in this video happens within a 24-hour period. And the time-lapse sequence is what I'm starting off with, but if you'll continue watching, I'll go over some close-ups of the bees and some more discussion about what other insects come to these uh, feeders. And again, we're using highly filtered water. This is from a well because my house is on a well. So that's pre filtered, and then I use the PUR filters that we get from Amazon. I'll put a link for that in the video description. I'll also put a link to these um, drinkers that I use. These are one quart plastic drinkers, and that'll also be in the video description. Now what happened during the day, of course, it warms up. We started the sequence uh, right after sunrise. And uh, the bees, of course, the activity picks up after noon. Most foraging occurs late morning, early afternoon. And here we are in the final sequences. 10%, 25%, and 50% are completely empty now. And you notice that they're concentrated all the way to the left. And look what is predominantly present here. These are all wasps for the most part. The honeybees have already gone into their colonies for nighttime protection, and the wasps continue to forage well after sunset. Now, for those of you who want to know the exact weather conditions, I decided to take a picture of my weather station here. And the sensor for wind, we're at four miles an hour. We have 74 degrees outside and 67% average humidity. Rainfall, of course, has been light for the whole month. We only have 3.44 inches. So this gives you kind of a, a base for when I started and did this test. 
I guess I could also, if you're interested in this weather station, I'll put a link to that. I got it on Amazon. Now for the time lapse sequences, I use the GoPro Hero 5. I just sat that thing up on a tripod right in front of all four of the drinkers and set it for a shot every five seconds. So here we are. First one is 5%, 5% sugar to water by volume. And if you notice the honeybees really didn't care too much for that overall. We went to 10%. They did show moderate interest in this, but so long as 25% and 50% sugar to water ratio was made available, they really heavily concentrated on that. And here you see a mix of uh, the honeybees, which are from my apiary. I know some people get concerned and have made comments in the past when I opened feed that uh, bees are coming from other apiaries and we're mixing potential varroa mites and things like that. Well, my bees are isolated. We are at least five miles from the nearest beekeeper in my area. So for me, open feeding, number one, I'm not ra wasting my resources uh, feeding other people's bees. And uh, number two, I'm really not that concerned about contagions passing back and forth bee to bee while they're concentrated at these drinkers. And this just shows again the GoPro setup. So here they are. They're concentrated. You see the yellow jackets here in the foreground lining up. And now yellow jackets, even though they do raid beehives, when they're all at an area like this where there's an abundant resource, they congregate without attacking each other. The exception to that though is, and you'll see them in here, see that uh, bald-faced hornet, which is really a wasp, but she's on the right there, kind of in the middle of the pack. They show up for nectar resources, which is the sugar water, but they're also here to attack, kill, and fly away with some of the smaller wasps. They don't seem to be very successful against the honeybees, but uh, they're definitely here as dual purpose predators. One for the nectar, and the second is to get some protein by capturing a smaller wasp, tearing it apart, and bringing that back to their nest site. So by sunset, this 50% sugar water was basically empty, and 25% uh, went down pretty much at the exact same rate. I think during this sequence, uh, we do still have some of the water in those reservoirs. And you can still see as the sun's backlit, 25 and 50% are at 50% and the 10 and 5% are down by about 20%. Now bees uh, have to drink their food. Any insect that you see that has that thorax and then the very thread thin connection between the thorax and the abdomen, uh, meat protein isn't gonna pass through that. So they can only drink. Now, insects uh, of different styles can handle thicker liquid than others. I hope some of you enjoyed those slow motion sequences. Uh, they are a lower resolution, of course. We'll improve on those at another time, but these are cool in slow motion. And uh, here we are again. We're just going to continue to show the bees and wasps kind of cooperating here at the drinkers. Now, if you look closely, there are a variety of wasp species here. And the ones, when you see their abdomens and they've got the yellow and black stripes going across them, now we're going into nighttime. So even though the video looks well lit, this is actually after sunset. So what's left at the feeders? Wasps. So, and wasps are not all the same. 
I have to tell you that, you know, like mud daubers and some of the smaller yellow jackets, woodland yellow jackets, they are pretty gentle to be around. But what we're looking at here, this nice large black and white one, is what's known as a bald-faced hornet. Now they're really just a wasp themselves, but they are really at the top of the food chain when it comes to wasps in our area. And some of them are here licking up the sugar water that's remaining. If you notice, all of these reservoirs are empty except for the 5% sugar water by now. And these bald-faced hornets, uh, if you've seen my other videos, I am not a fan of these wasps. They are really aggressive. They can fly at night. They navigate at night. They can squirt venom in your eyes. They are just, um, I don't know what to say. They are a very, very defensive and capable flying, stinging insect. And the cool thing is here, now that we're after sunset and most of the honeybees have gone to their hives, you get to see on these reservoirs all these different varieties of wasps. And some of these, again, they've come from the woods. Some of them are meadow. Some of them come from ground nests. And others are paper wasps. There's a honeybee real quick there. But like, look at this curious looking wasp. Long and slender. And they're pretty docile. I'm close to these things. I don't have any protection on. And uh, they're just pretty passive at this point. Of course, it's cooling down. It's nighttime. There's a honeybee there on the left. But again, as I said, most of the honeybees have gone. There's a bee fly there right in front of us. That's an imitator. Now mm -hmm. I'm showing you my bug zooka. This is what I use to collect sometimes yellow jackets if they're really getting pesky mm -hmm. and I'm trying to work the bees. But tonight, you know, I just can't let these bald-faced hornets go. So I'm going to have to go after them. These are yellow jackets. These are not my target species right now. But I am collecting bald-faced hornets so that I can look at them up close. The bug zooka lets you catch things alive. If you get something that you don't want to kill, you can release it later after observation. And for me, in my mm -hmm. case, I can photograph them. But look at these different wasp species. They're really mm -hmm. interesting. Five percent, the only thing that's left to drink from. Mm -hmm. And you can see the honeybees are congregated there to the right side of the screen. Uh, these bees are staying kind of grouped together and they're gonna stay on these feeders overnight, which is interesting too. Now look at these bald faced hornets. I just can't let them sit there. Oh. There you go, taking them out with my bugzooka. Oh, there's another one. She's aggressive. Just, you know, they're not like any other wasps. Goodbye. And these are what I would call, you know, passive friendly wasps here. Those of you who know your wasp species very well could chime in in the comment section and share with all of us. Uh, again, it's, it's fairly dark now. Don't be fooled by the exposure of the video camera that I'm using, which makes it look well lit. Uh, we are well past sunset, and of course these honeybees have moved up underneath this brick to protect themselves from heavy dew and of course the cold temps overnight, and in the morning they'll find their way back to their hives. Another bald-faced hornet. Got that one. And there's a bald-faced hornet. If you've ever had an encounter with bald-faced hornets, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They come at you like nothing else. Just look at her going after all the other wasps that are just there to drink. She is not a friendly wasp when it comes to the drinking hole here. Yep, got you too. So we're putting away everything, packing up the GoPro, and of course there's a little wasp on it. Very timid. You know, we're out here, we're not at their nest. So keep in mind, wasps, when they're out at a feeding space, are not uh, defending that site, so they're very easy to approach. And here's my collection for the evening of bald-faced hornets. So I'm going to take these back and get some close-up photographs of them. And uh, again, my least favorite wasp. 
I'll put a link to the Bugzooka too if you're interested in that. Now here we are. This is the following morning, actually right at sunrise. It's cold and it's rainy. And who's out flying around? The yellow jackets. Yellow jackets have a huge advantage over the honeybee. They fly in colder temperatures. Mm -hmm. I've seen yellow jackets flying around in 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, they're able to gather resources before the honeybees are even out and about. And if you look at the ones that have the abdomens with the independent dots on left and right going down the back, that's a queen. So this time of year, a lot of uh, the yellow jackets that are going out and about are the newly hatched queens that are going to hope to winter over here because the temperatures are getting colder. And they'll be the ones that will establish new colonies uh, in the spring of next year. So they are definitely hungry for carbohydrates. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope you enjoyed seeing these wasps up close and what sugar preferences the bees and wasps have. Thanks again.